So a quick rundown on the latest version of the Pi Switch firmware, which is 2.4.2.9, currently online as of the 24th of April 2025. Anyone that owns a camper player, uh, or even a full camper, I can highly recommend this device, um, especially with the custom firmware. On its own, the device is um, yeah, it's quite compact, you can see there in my hands. It's about 30 centimeters uh, wide, pretty much the same size, I got it on the screen there. On its own, the standard firmware will work with many units, it's designed for like Axe FX, uh, the HX Stomp, the Camper and various other uh, brands and types of pedals. But the Pi Switch firmware is designed for the Camper and uh, it's a two-way communication, whereas the standard one is just uh, a MIDI out. So this is my config and one of the things you've heard me probably say in the original video is it's quite impressive that you can program the whole thing via uh, a web browser. And this web browser can connect via the media interface on my PC to the actual Kemper, which is what it's connected to now. So if I just um, change some of the presets um, out of screen on my Kemper, you can see that the values update. If I engage the overdrive and various effects, you can see we get uh, feedback in terms of the indication of what effects going on and off. This is um, where you configure it, you do all your homework. Um, you can go, you can dig deep and you can uh, get into the codes. The main two code sections are the inputs coding. Don't be scared by all that text. Uh, a lot of that is automatically created, uh, as is the display coding content there. Uh, a quick example how to program a button. Uh, and there's two ways you can test this, like so you can connect it via MIDI to your Kemper units, or we can use um, a virtual Kemper. And that gives us uh, some feedback. If we look over on the side here, of the different uh, slots and states and effects, and as we tweak them, we move it. But uh, it's quite useful if you actually connect it to your own Kemper so you can see what's going on using the MIDI in that. So uh, if, for example, I want to program one of these buttons down at the bottom, we select the gray bar. You can add more than one function to each button, uh, but that one, for example, is select rig number three, um, and it's using the LEDs on the collars, and I'll show you the actual MIDI pedal in action in a moment. Um, more exotic functions. I'm changing like the rig volume on this button, going up to plus four dB. That one sets it to zero dB. Uh, it also engages an overdrive. Tap tempo on there. And another cool feature, which wasn't on the last video, is the, the wheel, I can actually choose the tempo. Um, one thing to note on this is um, if you use the uh, brief display of changing variables such as the expression pedal or the tempo, that flash on the screen I found uses um, quite heavy CPU processing and doesn't give a reliable communication to the camper. So that's turned off currently. So uh, not that you need any feedback, uh, visual feedback interaction on there, it's optional, but um, it comes at a cost. Um, so let's take a look at my actual unit, which is down here. And it's just a case of um, plugging the USB in one side and the other side goes into the camp, which is just out of uh, view on here. And that powers up the unit. You can see it firing up there. Only takes about five or 10 seconds to power up. He says, and it's just gonna do a quick update with the uh, the camper to uh, get the information across. So as I said, the bottom five row, they're the slots. We get a number, um, I've got a big, display there of the, the bank and the slot number. The actual name, which you can change on the Kemper, comes up on the screen so you know what preset you got and any information you want to enter with that. Uh, bank up, you can scroll up or down as many or as few banks as you wish. Again, that's a new add-on to the since the last video. And it loops around, so I've got it limited to nine banks. So when I go down below bank one, the maximum bank's nine. And if I go above bank nine, back to bank one. So I choose my bank, choose my slot, and then we've got it. As I said, um, you can tap tempo. You can see the BPM down the corner there. Or you can hold down for beat scan. And uh, if you've got a camp, you should know what beat scan is and what it does. 
or the cool feature, I can choose my tempo on the uh, on the wheel there. So obviously I'll probably do this um, while I'm not playing, so it doesn't matter of any uh, communication demands. So I can probably roughly tap a tempo or beat scan it, and I can fine tweak it just to uh, make sure it's to the tempo for any uh, time-based effects. As I said, button one, that gives me plus four dB of the rig volume and engages the distortion, which is uh, in my slot B on the Kemper. This button will turn the rig volume to zero dB, leaves my slot B effect still engaged. If I want to disable that, I can do it over on the Kemper or a quick way out of my lead sound, if you like, the plus four dB and the typically an overdrive for lead sounds. I can just call that slot one more time and it reverts to its default state of zero dB rig volume and slot B disengaged. So that's great. Um, and again, on the Kemper itself, just move across here. Um, the only buttons I need to use if I want to switch on um, slot B, I'll turn it off. My delay button's on there, delay on, delay off. Uh, and this is the more function. So that's one of the new features of the latest firmware for the Kemper. And uh, I've not really used many of the delays, um, so the more functions, but I normally use it to increase the amount of delay, maybe some specialized effects I've got on there. So, and any changes, your buttons, as you probably know, go to a yellowy color. Also, I've got the expression pedal, which is on a standard stereo quarter inch jack. And that is linked to the wah, which puts out a MIDI CC1. And for that, I can rock it backwards and forwards and obviously sweep between it. Like I say, if you enable the display, you'll get a percentage display of the expression pedal, but that comes at some CPU cost. And I found that that doesn't give a smooth response. Disabling that as it is here, I'll get a really clean, smooth transition between any wire effects, or possibly if the wire's linked to the volume, which you can do inside the camper. Um, the only slight negative I found that's happening with the Pi Switch firmware, and the developers are aware of this, is with no pedal connected, you get what's known as a floating value. So as that's coming out, it's not going to no definite ref reference point. So you might find with it disconnected, you get sort of fluctuating wah values, um, which can be quite annoying interference. I've done a hardware modification, which anyone with a solder and iron and a bit of electronic knowledge could probably do. So when there's no uh, expression plugged in, it has got a fixed reference point. So there should be no uh, sporadic values as such. I'll see if I can load a, a photo of that at the end of this video. So there we go, the Pi Switch firmware. Um, hopefully this is going to be in a state where I can take it out and uh, gig it now. More for a fly rig than anything. Um, also, one other bonus feature is whilst you're doing this, you could have the USB, uh, the other USB on the camper connect to rig manager. So you can actually see any movements that are occurring either from the pedal or from the on-screen editor to uh, to see what kind of uh, features you're tweaking and moving about with. So um, check it out. Uh, the web address there at the top, piswitch.tunetown.d. Uh, um, search the Kemper forums. It's all on there. Definitely worth checking out, and I'm sure you'll like it. Please give the developer a donation um, just to reward his time. He's obviously put a lot of time and effort into this, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Signing off.